welcome to my channel. If this is your first time or welcome back if you watch my videos and if you do, I thank you so, so much. I love to upcycle clothes and I love to share my passion with you. And today we're going to create a leg and look outfit. Now I bet a lot of you who watch my videos probably know what leg and look means, but if you don't, it's a German word for layered look and I've heard it pronounced Lagen Luke. So that's what we're creating today. And the only thing we're actually making is one layer for this outfit because the rest I already have made and we're going to tweak some pieces just a little bit. So my first layer will be these hair and pants. And I have tutorials for everything I'm going to show you except for the scarf I'm wearing. It will be part of the outfit. But um, I'll talk about that throughout the video a little bit. So the first layer will be these hair and pants. And then I want to create, this is just a white nightgown, cotton, just super lightweight and comfy. And we're just going to create some interest towards the bottom because that will be our next layer over top of the harem pants. And then this blouse, I also have a tutorial for that. I'll put all these links in my description. And then will come the duster or kimono, whatever you like to call it. And then the scarf. And I actually have a purse dying in the washer right now, a dark green, and I'll talk about that. So now we're just going to do some simple sewing to make this look really cool at the bottom. And then we'll dye some things and I'll guide you through the whole thing. Okay, so I want to start by just adding some ruffles to the bottom of the nightgown. And I have two thrifted skirts on this hanger. There's a real short one and then this more basic cotton one. And I am going to use this for the ruffles and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so this is the larger, more simple skirt. And the first thing I'm going to do is just cut the waistband off. And once I do that, see this is lined. This is part of the reason I really love this skirt. It's a light, almost gauzy, not quite, but just a thin cotton. And it also has a lining, which is a light, thin cotton. And I will use, maybe not on this project, maybe, maybe not, but I will use all this light cotton. I really love that. But removing the waistband separates that lining from the top of the skirt. And I just want to deconstruct this skirt. So once I remove the waistband, I will cut the skirt open on one side just so that I have a nice big piece of fabric to work with. And I'll do the same thing to the lining, cut it open on the side. Okay, so now that this is all cut open, it's pretty long, I want to make five and a half inch ruffles to start with on my nightgown. So I am just going to cut a couple strips off of this. Now this one's textured. It has sort of a little bit of pleating. I'll cut five and a half inches off the bottom and this piece will be textured, but the next one will not be, and that's okay. It's really fun to mix and match different textures and patterns. So I just usually take my ruler and look at the five and a half, because I know I want five and a half, and just start cutting and I move my ruler as I go, because this does not have to be absolutely perfect. And so I'll go all the way down, cutting it five and a half inches, and then I'll come back to this one and do the same thing. I can't give you a measurement on how much length of a ruffle you'll need because your nightgown's going to be different than mine. Your ruffles will be different than mine. I'm just making sure I cut quite a bit and I can always come back and cut more if it's not enough. Okay, so now I have my five inch strip cut out. I have a couple of them, but I'm laying one out. This is the bottom of my nightgown right here. 
and I'm kind of laying it out to see where I want to sew it. And I want this one to come up on the side higher than the nightgown because I want this little piece to peek out and kind of look like another layer underneath of that. And then I want it to come swoop down and extend past the nightgown a little bit in the middle and then back up. And so once I kind of lay it out how I want it shaped, I'm just taking some straight pins and I'm marking at the top of that ruffle just instead of, I don't want to use a marker, chalk won't show up. So this is just pretty much going to be my guide, these pins, when I go to my sewing machine. And this, this is a lot of fabric to work with, and you can kind of lose track of your line. You know, you would think you could kind of eyeball it maybe and just sew it, but that's too much fabric going on. It gets kind of confusing. So... I'm just going to put a little pin at the top of this ruffle just to mark where I want it. Okay, so once I have this all marked, I hope you can see my pins. I'm going to turn it over and do the exact same thing. Lay my strip of fabric down, see where I want it. And I want mine to meet at the sides. You can do whatever you want with yours. So now it's time to sew my ruffle on. And what I will do is I'll take this to my sewing machine and I always start at a side seam and I will slide this into my machine, put the needle through my nightgown and then I will take the edge of my strip of fabric and I will put that over top and put the needle through that as well. And then I will just sew this ruffle without, I won't pin it or anything. I will pleat it as I sew. So I'll do my stitch and back stitch and I'll start sewing and I'll fold this over on top of itself about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And then I'll go another few inches fold that over three or four inches. So I'd probably come from this about three or four inches, fold that on top of itself between three quarters of an inch or an inch and just continue sewing. I'll, here's the needle, I'll fold it over, sew a little more. Fold it over, sew a little more. And I will just follow those pins all the way around as I sew my ruffle. And if I run out of ruffle and I have to grab my second piece, I'm not gonna sew these together or anything. This is a very forgiving look. I will just overlap it and continue to go. So I'm at my machine and I have the nightgown. I slid the bottom in and I put the presser foot down over top of that seam where I'm starting at the pins. And I'm just going to stick my needle in just so it doesn't move. And now I'm going to take one of my strips, left, lift up my presser foot. I can remove this pin now. And I will slide it right underneath, close to that needle. Now the edge of the strip, I'm just lining up with the side of my presser foot. Now go forward and back to lock in the stitch. Okay, here's an important thing. <laughs> I'm using blue thread because I am dyeing this blue. And a lot of times, if you're going to dye something, try to match the thread with the color of dye you're going to use because a lot of times the thread will not dye and then you'll have like weird white thread or something. So I'll start sewing a little bit and then I'm watching my pins, my guideline, and I'm just going to overlap that. I'll do about an inch. Now I'm bringing that pleat, that fold towards me. You can go away if you want, but just try to stay consistent all the way around, whether you fold that towards you or away from you. 
So, and then I'll sew over top of that pleat. Here's my next pin. Now I know I can remove that. Come three or four inches, fold it over again. Sew to that. And just take your time because I'm following my needles here and making sure I have things lined up. I'm going to stick my needle in and reposition this a little bit. Now I can remove this pin, make another pleat. And just continue that all the way around. Okay, now I'm going around a pretty sharp curve. Just remember, your sharper curves require a little more pleating in order to get them to lay nicely. If you don't do much pleating there, a lot of times the ruffle will stick out and we want it to lay nice, just like the rest of it. So around this corner, I'm just going to add a little bit more pleating. Okay, so now I want to use ruffles from this short little skirt that we have with all these ruffles. And I find that these little skirts are pretty easy to find in my thrift stores. So I'm just finding the side seam. I just want to cut it open right now so it's easier to work with. And I'm just cutting straight down. Okay. Let me move that out of the way, be easier to see. Okay. So now I have my little skirt all cut open and it has three layers of ruffles plus a lining. I want, I don't want this middle ruffle because I feel like that's a synthetic. It might be polyester or something it feels like, and I'm afraid that won't dye. This will all be dyed blue, and I want natural fabrics for the type of dye that I have. So I am going to cut off this ruffle and the bottom ruffle. I'm just staying as close to the, as close to that stitch line as I can. I'll get that one cut off and then I'll get this one cut off. Okay, so I have my two ruffles cut out. One is five and a half inches tall and the other one is three and a half inches tall. And I think that's great. I'm gonna take advantage of those fun different heights. So. In order to sew these on, I want to take my pins and create another guideline. Now what I'm going to do is go start at the side and I'm going to go two inches above this ruffle and I'm going to stick a pin. And I'm just doing approximately two inches. Now I'm going to come to this side and mark with a pin two inches at the side seam where this ruffle is. A pin at the side seam two inches above the ruffle. And now I'm going to just look at these pins and just eyeball this. And you know, you could use a yardstick or something if you want but I don't like my stuff perfect. So I am just going to stick pins, try to line up this pin with this pin and basically make a pretty straight line all the way across. I'll stick a pin there, 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 and here. And then I'll turn it over and do the exact same thing. Okay, so now it's time to sew my ruffles on and I will pinch pleat it pretty much the same as I did this one, just every few inches overlap it. But on this one, this is the front side of the nightgown. I want to see in the middle here, the large ruffle, and then I want the small ruffle to start. I want this to be asymmetrical, so that would end about right there. And then I want this one to start because I just think that's really cool to have just the different lifts and levels 
here. And so what I'll do to create that look is I'm going to stick a pin. So I've pinned everything this way. Now I want to stick one pin in the front where I want that large ruffle to stop. And that will remind me, you know, remember we have all this billowy fabric everywhere. You don't really know where you are sometimes when you're sewing. So I just stuck an extra pin in here to know where I want to stop my large ruffle. And so I'll go to my machine. I'll start on the back side of the nightgown and I will start about in the middle. Maybe you want yours more off center. Maybe you want the same size ruffle all the way around. That's This is your project, you do whatever you want. But this is the back side of the nightgown. I'll slide the bottom into the machine, stick my needle in about in the middle here, and then I will stick my large ruffle over top of the nightgown and put the needle through that as well. And then I will just pinch pleat it all the way around, around the side, across the front. <laughs> I know this is a lot going on here, but across the front until I get to that pin that I put in this way. Then I know to stop. I'll cut my fabric off if there's any left. And then I'll start the small ruffle. I'll overlap that a couple inches and then continue all the way around to the back till I get to where I started with the large ruffle. the sewing. If you want to do something like this and have it be more of a summer dress, you might want to add more ruffles or a lace doily or some embroidered vintage linen pockets, things like that. But I don't want all that bulk because I'm only going to mainly be using mine as a layering piece. So now what I want to do is dye this blue. I chose blue because I already have a duster whoops, in blue and I have these great hair and pants it's like a tie-dye blue and I want this to be pretty much all one color and so I am going to take this shirt along with this and dye it denim blue and before I talk about dyeing I do have a tutorial on how to make these shirts. The tutorial is actually on this one, and it's a high low and some really fun ruffles. This is made out of a men's shirt. This was made out of a women's blouse, a woman's blouse. Um, so I'll put the link to that tutorial in my description, but this is the one I'm going to use, and it will go over top of the dress like this, and I want to dye them together. And what I will use is Rit Dye. I'm going to move you up a little bit. And I'm using the denim blue. I'm pretty sure that's what I used on the duster and the harem pants. Um, Rit Dye, there's so much to say about dyeing. Um, the Rit Dye that I use is only for natural fabrics like cotton, silk, wool, things like that. Now there is a writ dye that's for synthetics. I've never used it and I would love to hear from somebody out there who has used it. Do you think it works? Are there any tips and tricks? Um, let us know. I'm really curious. But I dye in my washer and I know that shocks a lot of people. There are instructions on the back how to dye in a washer and how to dye in a pot on top of your stove. And I choose the washer 
And after I'm done dyeing, I know a lot of people wonder, will it get on your other clothes when you do laundry? Will it ruin your machine? Do it at your own risk, but I haven't had any problems. After I'm done dyeing something, I'll do an empty load just with nothing but water and I'll throw detergent in there and do an empty load. And then when I go to do laundry, I won't do whites next. I'll do like darks. So I'm going to take you up to my laundry room and show you how I dye. And before I do, let me talk a little bit more about these pieces since I'm on the subject. So these hair and pants were made out of a skirt. We turned them, I turned them inside out, sewed a half moon, turned them right side out, and now they're hair and pants. The tutorial for that is in my description. Now, I always say in my description, and maybe if you're not familiar with the YouTube layout, you may not know how to get to my description. It's really easy. So underneath this video, I'll have a title like create a leg and look outfit or something like that. Tap on that title and then it'll bring up the description. Okay, so, and then we created this in another tutorial out of just a white house robe, a thrifted robe. It was super simple and plain and we just really jazzed it up and dyed it. The tutorial for this also in my description. So, let's get this dyeing. And then um, I wanna talk a little bit about the purse I'm adding with it. Okay, so to get started, the first thing I do is add one cup of just regular table salt into the washer. And then this is, like I said, the denim blue dye and shake it up good. Sometimes it gets a little thick and settled at the bottom. And the more dye you use, the darker the color. And I, it's fall, I want it to be as dark as possible. I want kind of a fallish look. So I'm just going to pour the whole thing in. And then I am just going to do a regular warm cycle that my machine's always set on. I'll get it started. And then I'm going to let this fill up with water for about five minutes before I put my clothes in. And I just want to talk a second while that's filling up. Now the lighting's really harsh and bad. You can probably see the bags under my eyes, but um, it's too loud. Hold on. Okay, so a lot quieter out here. Once your items are dyed, I like to dry mine because I feel like the hot dryer heat sets that dye and when you go to wash it after you wear it, it won't fade as much. And dry cleaning is also an option. If you cannot dry your item, say you have silk or wool or something like that, just heat set it with an iron when it's all lined dry the first time and just put it on your ironing board, basically iron, iron it. I would recommend putting a tea towel down and using no steam on your iron. And that heat, I feel, really sets that dye. And so if you don't want to dry clean, to wash it in the washer, wash these by your, themselves. You don't want to wash them with any of your other laundry and wash it on a gentle cold cycle. Okay, so it's been almost five minutes. It's pretty much filled up here. And I am just going to put my shirt and my nightgown in the water and start it up again. And I always am so curious. I always come back and shut my, pause my washer and see what it's looking like. Cause sometimes if it's like a super bright color, I could add like a dab of brown to mute it a little bit. I always just kind of check and see what it's doing. And I'll show you in about five minutes what it's doing. We'll take a look. Okay. So it's been about four minutes. And, okay, you saw me use denim blue, right? Now, what color does that look to you? It's purple. And 
that's what using dye is like. You just really never know what you're going to get. Maybe the dye lot on this denim blue was different than my other one. Maybe this fabric took to it differently. But I think maybe if I add a dab of yellow to this, it might make it a little more blue. You know, this is just experimenting. So I'm going to add, this is a full bottle. I'm going to add maybe about a fourth of it and see if that changes the color. Now I'm going to have to let that run another two or three minutes and then check it. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. Let's see what the yellow did. Okay, not as perfect. It's starting to become a little more blue. So that tells me that the yellow is working a little bit. I'm going to add more yellow in hopes that it works even better. So I'm just going to, it's about this full right now. I'm probably going to add down to about there and cross my fingers. <laughs> All right, we'll check it again. Okay, it's been a minute or two. Let's have a look. And we have blue. Yay. You know, it may be this dark. Sometimes when it goes through, it still has the wash and a rinse to go through. Sometimes it will lighten up. But even if it's this dark, it's still in the same family as my duster and my um, hair and pants. So it's going to work. No more purple. Yay. <laughs> okay, so I wanted a purse to go with this outfit, but I didn't want to dye it blue. I mean, I want it monochromatic all blue, but I wanted the purse to be a little bit different. So I actually dyed this purse, and I'll show you a before and after of it. And I do have a tutorial on this purse, sort of. So I have had this purse for years and years, and I thought it would be fun to do a tutorial on it. I made it before I started doing YouTube videos. So I created this purse, very similar, okay? And so the tutorial in my description is on this purse, but it's modeled after this one. Now, can you dye your purse? <laughs> Do it at your own risk. This is the very first time I've ever dyed a purse after it's completely made and embellished. And I've had this for years and years. And so it's had a good life. If it didn't turn out or I didn't think it would get ruined, but you just never know. Um, and it turned out just fine. I was willing to take the risk. You know, when you upcycle, you got to be brave. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, no risk, no reward. So I think this will be perfect for the outfit. And by the way, I used the Rit Dye Dark Green and I used a whole entire bottle. I wanted it to be as dark as possible. And you see, it still didn't even really turn out super dark. So this is a whole bottle of Dark Green Rit Dye. Okay, so I'll put the whole outfit on one piece at a time. Here's the gown that we worked on. And it turned out blue, hooray. Um, you might wonder why I used yellow to turn it blue. It's a guess. You know, I like, when I really wanna change a color, I try to use primary colors, yellow, blue, red. Well, red would have turned it, the purple more of an eggplant. Blue, we're trying blue. And so the only thing really left was the yellow. So I'll put this on. Okay, now I'm going to add the hair and pants. Okay, so the hair and pants are cute. They give you kind of a modern bloomer feel. Now I'm going to add the top. Okay, so here's the top. Now I'm going to add the duster slash kimono. Okay. So now I want to add this beautiful floral 
blue cut velvet scarf, $1.99 at my Goodwill. Okay, the purse. Okay, so now I'm going to add some clogs, a pair of tie-up brown boots, or some black combat boots, or some whimsical rain boots would be really cute with it too. Okay, here's the finished look. Couldn't be more cozy. So if you wanna stick around for a little slideshow, I'm going to pull some pictures of some leg and look outfits that I've made and sold over the years. Now there's more of a modern twist on some of these. They're more of a boho layered look. And you'll see a lot of them on my life-size Barbie doll. I used to have a great mannequin that was had a beautiful body and she made everything look good, but she'll be in a lot of the pictures as well. So thank you so, so much for watching.